Welcome to the Big Kickoff League of Ireland podcast with myself, Roy Shanahan, and Nathan Doyle from the BigKickoff.com. And Nathan, it's been a few weeks. You've been away, you've been travelling around Europe, and you've got to see a hell of a lot of football stadiums. Yeah, Mr. Worldwide, uh, back doing what we love to do, Roy. Um, yeah, I've been blessed enough now. Got away with Mora, myself and myself on the trip. Got through a lot of Italy. Um, we only planned to go to one Serie A game in Florentina versus Roma, but Jeez, I got my whole host of stadiums in. I got another Serie A game, uh, Vanessi against Bologna. Tell you what, Lewis Nanny rocking out for Vanessi. That was a nice little surprise. Mark <laughs> Nautovic was up top for Bologna. All the stars came out when they heard the Irish lads were in town. Yeah. Wow, yeah, absolutely deadly trip. And as well, got to see the San Siro before I got knocked down. So there you go. That was good. Were, were you in the San Siro? I done the proper little tour, you know, everything, the proper touristy uh, attraction about it. I haven't really been, so how impressive really is it? Really, do you know what I found absolutely fascinating, right? Obviously, we know AC and Inter both share the stadium. So, talk about this for Nassau Ball, like. So, any time AC Milan are playing, they cover the whole stadium, everywhere, back, the back room areas, every bit of marketing, anything you can think of has to be head to toe AC. No sign of Inter Milan playing at all. But then when Inter were playing in the San Siro, they have to take all the AC Milan merchandise and crests, everything. It, there cannot be one AC Milan crest when Inter Milan are playing. And they do no that way. every week. So, like, your man was telling us these amazing facts and figures about the history of the stadium and the players that played there. I was just looking at the wall, like, so every time, me, you was the some poor soul that has to like, cut about Full time job. Full time job. That's who your man was saying. Yeah. He's We're probably going, blessed that Bowes and Shel- Shelbourne didn't get that stadium. <laughs> yeah, there's some poor groundsman now after sweating <laughs> with the thought of that, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. So that was it. I missed half the tour just looking around like, that's mental, man. Like, what poor soul. What, some poor lad in a CE scheme walking around the San Siro taking down the place. <laughs> uh, nah, what a trip, though. Absolutely brilliant. But happened to be back talking about League of Ireland. Good, and uh, since you've been gone, we've had, as you can see in the back background there, Mount Hawk, Kerry Football Club have decided to try and enter the league. This is a brilliant thing, isn't it? Ah, uh, deadly. I appreciate that the lads waited till uh, it was two weeks into a month holiday, so we couldn't talk <laughs> about it whatsoever. <laughs> uh, like, we've talked about this so long, having me about the diversity of different clubs around, you know, the likes of Mayo and now Kerry and things like that. Thought it would have been the Trilly Dynamos, or even uh, I know they pulled, they showed that they weren't too interested in coming to the league. They wanted to focus on junior football. Even Killarney have an amazing setup down in Kerry. They could have slotted into League of Ireland football, but no, yeah. Once the appetite is there, um, in terms of fan base, and you know, we get consistent figures through the tone styles, and of course financial assessments, they had to be um all all looking good too. But brilliant news, really, really brilliant. It'd be great to see them in, in the League of Ireland in twenty twenty three. Yeah, that's it's really exciting. And again, for Kerry, it'll be brilliant because it'll bring people down there. It's more tourism. People are likely to go down, watch a game. They might even stay over the night, the hotels, the restaurants, the local shops. Everyone's going to get a little piece of the action there. So it, it'll be great for it. And hopefully everyone in Kerry gets behind it and really pushes it on because uh, it's a place that needs it, you know, and, and Ireland needs it. Ireland needs all these counties to have football there's football in all the counties but they need them to have something to focus on and aim for and it's brilliant that uh, Kerry uh, could very well be and I'd be very surprised if they're not in it uh, come next March okay Uh, might as well just before we change the subject we might as well have a little look at the likes of Finn Harps St. Pat's and Shamrock Rovers all looking for uh, well redevelopment and new stadiums yeah there's a lot going on isn't there we we, we talked about the Oh, the Daily Mount Tolga Park fiasco we won't, we won't get into that too much uh, we've seen improvements with St. Pat's as well that the looks like Dublin, uh, Dublin City Council and South Council as Stone Dublin Council as more importantly are very open to the idea of uh, improving the, the capacity of Richmond Park which is absolutely brilliant to see Finn Harps have also been approved after talks with the, the, the Department of Sport and the FEI and Donegal County Council to uh to start work on an alternative build for a, a new stadium up in Bally Buffet, which is desperately needed. You know, we talked about this, the state of all the facilities, most facilities anyway, within the League of Ireland, and there's, there's major work needed uh, to be done. Of course, if you were watching the the under twenty one Ireland game, you would have seen construction would have started on the new North Stand uh, in Tallis Stadium. 
you know, we're seeing that that's going to add an extra 2,000 into the capacity, turn and tally into a 10,000 seat stadium, all seats, all covered. That I did see it. some people, Nathan, giving out Shamrock Rovers fans yeah. on how long it's going to take. It's going to take the year or whatever it is, and yeah. that that's too long. But it's not as if they're filling out that stadium week in, week out. So I, I'm not even that sure. It's for the it's for the future. It's it's not it's not even for now because they're not getting they're, they're not turning people away at the moment. So this is for those internationals that are there and when Shamrock Rovers and they will grow bigger and it, there will be a time. So I think people can. can Kind of just to relax a little bit about how long it's going to take. It's just great that it's happening. Yeah, like you said, it is. It's July twenty twenty three. I think is the is the estimated um, completion of the new stand. It's eleven point five million. It's going to cost. But yeah, the, the fact that it's going to go up to a ten thousand seat stadium that'll make it eligible for Champions League group stage games and you know Europa League, Europa Conference League group stage games and. I think that's where Rovers are at, Andy. You know, like we we talk about the draw now in a couple of minutes, but that's the next big step for Rovers, and even the you know, Derry City that are going to have a major financial push behind them in the next uh, not God knows how long, but definitely in, in the short term anyway. So it's to get themselves consistently into the group stages is major. Your way for European competitions and for Shamrock Rovers to be able to do that in the group stages and not have to go to the likes of Viva uh, would be absolutely brilliant for them in the long term. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know the way I feel about the, the public service and, and how they, they do their work. I don't think they're efficient. I do think that they they take a, take a long time to get through stuff that doesn't need to be a long time. And it's no wonder everything like hospitals and stuff like that run over budget. In this case, South Dublin County Council are getting it done. There's no messing about. They're getting it done. Unlike Dublin City Council, who have made a mess of the whole Daily Mount situation. And it shows me that if if people are doing their jobs properly, we can get these things done. There's money there. There's there's a hundred percent there's there's money there and, and the politicians will tell you left right and centre there's no money there. I seen an article today where it's in in the journal that the Oroctus are looking to. Uh, make their own wine and sell it in the bar in there. So this is where our public money is going. Absolute nonsense. There's money there when they need it, uh, uh, if they want to use it. So they need to start looking at this. This is about jobs. This is about uh, making sure that the infrastructure is good. And it, it's it's huge uh, across the board. Uh, and for the fans, getting out there, making League of Ireland something to be proud of, uh, it goes a long way. So uh, hopefully they get their fingers out there. Uh, just one thing I want to talk about before we kind of skip on to the to the to the new news and what we're talking about this week. Just over the course of the last while, two managers, Rory Higgins and Stephen Bradley, both turned down English club advances. Uh, this has to say a lot about where they feel that the League of Ireland is now. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? You know that they're really committed to the projects that's going on at the club. Like just saying a minute ago, Shamrock Rovers and Derry both clubs where. A really bright future ahead of them domestically and hopefully in terms of Europe. Um, even though you, you look um, at Notts County and you can always say they're down in the, uh, the the National League, which it's probably lower standard to what the League of Ireland is at at the minute, I think, anyway. It's still a massive name club, isn't it? A club that's been associated with, with the English Football League for unbelievable amount of time. I think it's over 100 years they've been in the Football League, right? I think I might, might be wrong. Saying yeah, that, no, they're the oldest still, club. In, in, in the oldest club, there you go. Yeah. So... It's still it's really an old famous club, but to see that both Rory and uh, Stephen Bradley have committed to the cause is excellent. On a smaller scale as well, we've seen it with Ian Ryan, didn't we? Uh, close yes. to the home, but there was a lot of talk about him going to Waterford. I thought he was made to slip into that position, but uh, even as soon as Ian Morris left, I think he looked like a very viable candidate. But him committing to the cause is staying at Wexford and. If I'm a Wexford fan, you'd be absolutely delighted with that because themselves at loan, these are clubs that have really got into a revolving door system with their managers and the project that, they, that Ian is doing down at Wexford, it's it's going to take a long time, slow progress. But we're seeing that this season, aren't we? With the uh, improved results, improved uh, uh, standing within the league table itself. So, yeah, it, it's great to see that the three managers, especially uh, Rory and Stephen, committing to League of Ireland and committing to their clubs. Brilliant going forward. And today we found out that Danny Sorrell is going to be the new Waterford United manager. Uh, how do we feel about that? Th- they've gone on a decent run, so yeah. something settled down there. Uh, <laughs> it's it's mad to think, is Danny going to come in here and unsettle everything? Because they've had such uh, a lot of bad publicity around their last few managers. You're just hoping that Danny now can settle in 
Um, I know I'm joking obviously about them, I'm unsettling them because they've, they've got a little bit of a settled side there uh, you hope that he goes along with that assesses that obviously can get the most out of that because they, they obviously can win games in this league and can get themselves promoted well, I don't think it is. I don't think you actually had caveat that statement, Roy, what you said about that you called unsettled things. I thought it was a strange time to do it. I personally would have, would have stuck with both uh, Gary Hunt and David Breen. Uh, what's the third on the table now? Seven, now, the seven points are Cork City, but it's still a lot of football to be played, Roy. It's going to be non stop now to November, isn't it? As we were, we were saying off here. Yeah. Six wins on the bounce, like the Lewis Britton and King Cavanagh in particular, really chipping in with goals now and starting to see it improve performance. Uh, I did. I thought it was a, it was a weird time to bring them in. I think you would have gave the two lads the off season to work with the players and really emphasize what, what they want out of them. Um, but to see, yeah, see Danny coming is strange. Look, he, he, he's experienced, you know. He's with South End, that underage football. Uh, he was with uh, Chelsea in the development management side of things. Charlton Athletic underage football. The West Ham is the youth development lead, and then we've seen him with Aldershot uh, in the National League as the manager there. So, definitely an, an experienced name to have around. But I think I would, if, if I was at Waterford, they've made some mental decisions, definitely worse decisions to hire up a man at Waterford. But yeah, I would have sticked with Bow Hunt and Brain uh, just off the back of what they were doing uh, in the short term, the results that they've been getting, the improvements we've been seeing. Yeah, I, I thought it was a strange, strange time to bring somebody in. Uh, midway through the season after the success the recent success in the league Absolutely um, just, just one thing that came out this week Dublin Bus and Bohemians it's been a, a, a very interesting week Bows love to, to try and stretch it out there with their, their jerseys like to make a, 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 I suppose people talk about yeah. the club and they certainly Oops. got them talking about this one haven't they? It's worked isn't it? I'm in the minority I think it's an absolute belter I actually I think, think it's okay. I think it's nice. I yeah. like it. I do. It's been getting a lot of, un, like, I think unnecessary hate. It's obviously within in your tastes. We see in Arsenal do this as well, didn't we? Over, uh, in London, they had the, uh, the, the the jersey with the London underground seating on it. I like it. It's something different. It's certainly got people talking. I follow a lot of uh, retro uh, football jersey pages and Instagram and things like that. And I've never seen a League of Ireland jersey do the rounds quite like this one. And yeah. the other one that's done the rounds is the Bob Marley jersey. Both Bo's yeah. jerseys. And it's Both. like that. It's only it's, it's only going to be a one-off. Uh, I think it's going to be in an FAI Cup game. So they, they don't have to look at it throughout the whole season. But yeah, no, boys are Bo's fan. I think I'll be making a portrait. So <laughs> actually, I, lo- I, I wanted to hate it and I've seen it. And, but no, I like it. I really, really do. Um, now, what for do you think of it? I think it's great. I think I, I like the jersey. Like I looked at Manchester United's new jersey that they had released, and it's I think it's a stinker. I don't like it. And when I seen this, and you compare it, I'm just saying, actually, I think I like this. It's just, there's something different about it. It's, it's the purple. I like like you look at that the head in the game top that you're wearing. And if you're on the podcast, you, obviously you won't you won't see this. But if you're watching on YouTube, you will. But Nathan's well, wearing if it. You wanna, if you want to see it, go on to umbo.ie, you can post the jersey yourself. There you go, it. there Every you go. Oh, I was working, I was <laughs> working. And, <laughs> but I like... I like the purple jerseys like Fiorentina I used to love that jersey as well you know so but I, there's something about Harchester United remember <laughs> Harchester United oh, the do you remember that team, yeah the dream team lads <laughs> so you can't go wrong with purple uh, but anyhow here's uh, here's a video again if you want to watch this video and you're listening to the podcast go on and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our League of Ireland channel the big kickoff League of Ireland Ireland, and uh, here's a, a video of them unveiling the jersey so see the killers with a Raxis battle surely don't to regret and kill it so but better bomb back for a rival, hit Kay Young claiming that title. The hell what's it? Fast wankers! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that will play both the balls and Shamrock Rovers section of the listeners. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah. Shock, right, yeah. Huh? Ah, I take a little sneak every now and again. Yeah, you know? you, you dabble, you dabble, <laughs> dabble in it, yeah. <laughs> when I get bored, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, I, I think I actually think it's a good jersey, and I, I like it a lot. So uh, fair play to Bose. They're always they're always keeping themselves in the headlines, and and that can only be a good thing. Now, um, before we go on to any more League of Ireland, uh, a tribute to League of Ireland legend Noel Campbell. He sadly passed away uh, at the start of the week. He did, yeah, it was sad news to see coming in. Not only he, he very uh, noteworthy with St. Patrick's Athletic, but as you said, well, it's the league as a whole. Uh, fortunately, Noel did pass away at the age of 72. Uh, 11 Castle Ireland as well. 
Uh, one of them was actually while playing League of Ireland football with St. Pat's. He's still the last St. Pat's player to be to represent uh, the Republic of Ireland while playing with Pat's. Um, nice little history tidbit there for you. Uh, his career, that was five years St. Pat's with Athletic. Then he went on to Fortuna Clown from 1971 to 1979. Actually became the first ever Irishman to play Bundesliga football. So That's definitely right. one, for the hi- one for the history books. Uh, then went to Shamrock Rovers. In 1980, to finish up his career, was quickly made uh, assistant manager to John Giles. And then when John left the management position to go over to uh, America, Noel slipped into the managerial position at uh, Shamrock Rovers. So yeah, just a little tip of the cap to Noel. Sad to hear he's passing uh, over the weekend. And yeah, send out all of our love and well wishes to anyone that knew him. Friends, family, uh, supporters that seen Noel playing down the years. Um, yeah, just just send out a best to, to to anybody that was uh, that was close that that knew Noel himself. And a story that's been doing the rounds was uh, it was one when Noel was he was on the bench for Ireland, and his dad was watching the game at home on the telly. And I think I don't know if it was his his sister or uh, daughter, but I think one or the other was with his dad. And the dad said, "Listen, go on and make a cup of tea. Let me know when, if Noel comes on. Give me a shout." And of course, the, the game's going on and there's one fella causing awful problems for, for Ireland. So they decided to tell Noel, said, Noel, listen, I, I need you to go on and sort this fella out. You know, go, get onto the pitch and sort this fella. He's causing us all sorts of problems. So, of course, Noel is about to come on. They, they're bringing him on. They bring him onto the pitch. Uh, again, the father's in watching at home, uh, but he's he's in there making the cup of tea. So... Uh, the ball comes onto the pitch. Noel's after coming on. He jogs over beside your man. The ball goes close to your man and Noel loafs someone and red card and comes off and he thought that sorting him out was red that he'd go out and, and, and do him one. And by the time the dad come back in, he'd been sent off. So <laughs> within a matter of a minute, minutes, uh, that was uh, Ireland down to 10 men. But uh, he definitely followed through on, on the job. <laughs> and uh, if anyone was wondering, uh, Noel from Dublin. You know, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> that was a brilliant one. That's a great story. 